Okay, fuck, dude. Okay. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is a conversation about cops murdering someone. They, they didn't even care. That's exactly right. They, they didn't care, care they who was care. watching. He was someone that these guys figured out they could get away with, beating the hell out of him. He just happened to die because never in Orange County's history, not one single on-duty officer has ever been as much as charged until now. I didn't join this cause because I wanted to go protesting. I did this because I knew him. I would see him, i smoke, he smoked, we would chat, we would chat with the owners of local restaurants, they all liked him. It was cool. He was mellow. He was a kind of a hippie kid in a way. He, he was, was a fixture here. Yeah. You couldn't you couldn't help but notice him just by the way he looked. He had bright red hair. Um, he was young. He was uh, vibrant, and he was very colorful. There were times where I could talk with him and have a conversation and connect with him. And when he was not doing well, he was talking to himself, and he'd be talking to himself rather loudly. So he drew attention to himself. I would see Kelly a lot of times while like walking around and my interactions with him were almost always where he was very quiet, he was very to himself, he would bum a cigarette sometimes for me, he said very little to me and I never ever perceived him as a threat to me like and then I, and I knew him, I interacted with him almost daily. People used to actually call him Homeless Jesse because he looked like him. <laughs> <laughs> because he had a red, a red beard and long red hair and they're like, oh, there's Homeless Jesse. I never got the sense that Kelly was a dangerous person in seven years of living there. No. I moved over to where the train station is, about 200 yards to where the point is where Kelly got killed. And I used to pass by him for, on a couple months from the time I moved in there before he got killed every day, a couple times a day. Like Jesse said, he seemed like he pretty much kept to himself, didn't bother people uh, for the most part. And he would sleep right there at the train station, a little alcove right near the tracks. Um, and I could see him from my balcony. And I, I felt bad for him, but I didn't know anything about his personality. And I was really surprised and shocked when uh, one of my roommates had told me that he had gotten killed. And I asked how, and he said the police beat him to death. And I said, well, was he armed? And he said, no. And I didn't know anything about Kelly, but what I knew is I wanted to find out more. And from that first city council meeting after that happened in early August, I became very upset with the way the town handled it. And that for me was the part where I got started to get involved in local issues. Put your hands on the back. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm sorry! I'm sorry, dude! As long as I'm sure that I have status as a human being and I'm not going to be beaten up, there's a disincentive for me to care about the person who is seen as less than human unless I'm willing to cross that bridge and see my sister or brother in that person's face. And I think that's what Kelly Thomas helped most of us do. Yes. When we found out what happened, there were a lot of us who shed tears of shame that we had allowed other human beings to be seen as less than human. Kelly didn't exactly. die because people are afraid mm -hmm. of homeless people. Kel Kelly it. was it's murdered because, because six cops have had a life experience as policemen that said to them that they could go way beyond the reasonable and not get in trouble for it. A human being was brutally murdered in our town. Human being, whether he was a criminal or not, or not homeless or not, nothing to do with it. A human being. When you hear that audio of another human being, like he said, pleading for his life, he said sorry I don't know how many times. He screamed for his father. And people really? saying that his father wasn't in his life, then what the hell was he screaming for him then? Of course he was in his life. He was reverting back. He was getting beat down by six murderers. This can happen anywhere to any that one of us, man. The way the Fullerton police handled that was worse than dreadful. And the, and the real crime of it is because every single one of the cops knew Kelly Thomas and they knew, well, it they exactly knew he was right. not dangerous. Right. Pretty obvious from the video that they were menacing him and they were, they were looking for a reason or an excuse 
to beat him up, yes. and especially Officer Ramos. Those weren't and, cops. And, and, and Perry, they, they, they were here. Cops. There is also in all, uh, in the public general perception of people with a mental illness, there is a stigma. People fear, they reject, they avoid the mentally ill. We know that they can be a part of the community. If two cops said to us, do X and Y, and we knew they were out of line, we'd comply because we have the resources and intellect to do something about it after the fact. Yeah, we're not going to give them an excuse to hit us. We're not going to give them an excuse to hit us. That's right. And, and Kelly got beat to death, got murdered, because he didn't, to their satisfaction, he did not comply. And you know, as he's crying for mercy for minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes and begging and begging and begging, they're hitting, one guy's yelling for him to get on his stomach, another guy's telling him to get his hands behind his no, back, and he's got, he's got 500 pounds of cop on top of him, he can't no. move. It's because the, he's not doing what they want. It's about exactly. power over people with no power and no self-restraint, exactly. no self-respect. As long as what? we were willing to let somebody <laughs> be less than human, we were culpable That's for right. what happened there. That's yeah. exactly. Let me go! I'm dead! Stop I had some friends when my neighborhood that would say, when are you going to stop this? When are you going to stop this? You're making our city look bad. Really? We're making the city look bad? We're not, you know, what made the city look bad was murder. It was us against them. Until that tape was released, there were so many people. Yeah. If I walked weeks. down the street saying justice for Kelly, I would be almost ran over, called a whore, and they kept saying, why don't you stop? When are you going to stop talking about this? We're not ever going to stop talking about this because this was wrong. It was absolutely disgusting and wrong. So a lot of people came against us. They're still against us. And all we want is justice for Kelly. We will not be repressed by him anymore. If it's government or the cops or whoever, we're not taking it anymore. And this town rose up every Saturday for week upon week upon week and simply said that. The day I quit going to protest was the day that the DA's office filed charges, at yep. least against Ramos and Cicinelli. Mm -hmm. They could have expressed condolences for what happened to the family. They could have said, they could have promised that there will be a full investigation by a, you know, an outside agency. They waited for months before that was offered to them to do. They waited till the public pressure built. Yes. And so what I was out there protesting for was for progress to be made, for charges to be filed, for someone to be held accountable, and for somebody to own up to this. And I, I feel strongly about this. If, if it, no, we didn't protest, if we didn't go to the city council meetings and say what we felt and make such a vocal issue of this and the media didn't cover it, nothing would have happened to any of these people. It's, it's, never, happened it's, never, it's never happened before. It's never happened before. Here, here's the thing. They're saying that they're now writing a policy. Really? Someone has to write a policy to say that you shouldn't beat someone to death? If you ask another cop and you, they watch that video of that night, they'll probably tell you the same thing I'm going to tell you is, those weren't cops. Those guys that sat there and did the Simon Says, no, those those guys were thugs, murderers. It could have been me. It could have the been The night of Kelly of Thomas's us. show, I walked home from downtown Fullerton mm -hmm. at 1 o'clock in the morning, and I was scared and I lived two blocks away. Mm -hmm. Cops followed me, they pulled up right beside me. I've lived here my whole life. My heart was beating faster than I could count. The, the people, the murderers, I was sick and tired of paying for these guys who had just killed somebody. Cops. They're out on the streets. We were paying for that. As a human, I cannot let murderers run out on the street. It couldn't happen. These gentlemen, stepped up to run for city council. I mean, mm -hmm. they were willing to sacrifice their personal lives because they saw the injustice. I don't agree 100% with Matt. I don't agree 100% with Barry. I don't agree with Chris most of the time. But the point is, is every one of us saw what was wrong. This is growing. Kelly's helping this grow into a bigger and bigger thing where when these cops are charged, the cops that thought they could do this to somebody else, guess what? Your charges are waiting for you now. God help me! God help me, God! Help me! Please, Jack! Help me! Help me, please, Jack! Help! Help, Jack! I can't breathe, Jack!
one of the things I think the art exhibit did was take something that had become kind of an abstract political argument and make it into something very human and very real, you know, and so it wasn't like, it's not like a Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, whatever kind of argument you want to have, which, you know, we've had here tonight a little bit. It wasn't about that. It was about a human being, and I think art has that power to take something abstract and make it very particular. I can say in words things, but these people in the front row here, they can paint the way I feel, how pissed I am, how sad I am, how sinking I am, how repulsed I am. I think what the artist brought to the exhibit, um, everything, all of their works were reactionary. And there were images that were very disturbing, they were difficult to, to look at, but also there were beautiful images. This whole room is just filled with talent. and. They're not just talented, they have opinions, and they have passion, and they have compassion. And that's what this is. It's the, it's the expression of compassion. What we were hoping was that we could create a sanctuary-like environment that could display very emotive material that was kind of kept within a frame, and that people could come in that may or may not agree. One of the things that, you know, that an art show like this could do is to provide an environment that's safe for everybody to come in and explore those feelings without having it thrown in your face. When we talk about what art can do or what art brings to the conversation, it's, I mean, we can see it as really the closest we can get to looking through somebody else's eyes. I found an image of him where it's kind of overexposed and a little bit blurry and he looks like He's not sure if anyone's really looking at him. My hope was that it would just be a really sensitive, beautiful picture that would last forever. And then I wanted to do something more, so I did another portrait just like that one. And you know how they put the black square in front of people's eyes when they want to be anonymous? That idea of taking his identity away from him, literally by bashing his face in, by taking his identity away from him. There were a couple of things that went through my mind when I saw John's pieces. And the first one is, it was immediately recognizable as the stills from the video. The second thing is, I looked at it, and because there was such debate over whether what happened was murder or not murder, whether these cops were right or wrong, by showing the video, you, there's a question of like whether art imitates life or whether art is trying to demonstrate truth. And by making a painting that was a frame from the video, it shows this is what happened, this is truth. Every night that we were working on the show, we were talking and then we'd end up crying. It was just after a really good talk with uh, Mike, I went up to my studio and it just happened. I had some images from the family and he was happy. He was with his family and he was beautiful and I wanted something of peace. This art exhibit has brought specificity to what was an abstract idea. And the understanding of what happened to Kelly was very difficult for me because I have worked with the police department. I have, have had a relationship with specific police officers for 20 years. Right now, the way we've positioned ourselves, it's us against them. And Those police officers are human beings. They have families. When they take their uniforms off, they're regular guys. What she just said just made my, my heart beat a little faster because um, when I created my piece, it was a picture of a little protester girl. She had a sign that was actually bigger than her and it said, who are the good guys now? And I was thinking, you know, I don't want to go with this us against them because the only way that that we can all heal through all of this is to realize that they are human too. In my painting, I only saw 40 seconds of that video and I got disgusted. Mm -hmm. The point where he puts his hands and feet in front of him and says, I'm done, I'm submitting. Couldn't it have ended then? I think everyone who made one of these signs is, is an artist. It, it really, to me, this was one of the most powerful elements of the, of the exhibition and continues to be that because if you want to call something art with an agenda, that's art with an agenda. The collective effect of the exhibition was to humanize Kelly, and, and that's very important in the context of what happened to him, because what the police did was literally to dehumanize him. They, they took away from him that which makes him human, the most precious thing any of us have. They treated him as an animal. His life. All you have to do is walk in here right now, look at a few of the pieces, and, and what happens is it not only invites, it forces you 
into the healing process. And I, what I mean by that is healing is ugly. Healing is not pretty. And this is the process our community needs. We need to enter into the very ugly process of healing that begins with seeing what really happened, embracing it, and if we need to, weeping over it, and then allowing it to transform who we are.